Good afternoon, everyone. You guys awake? Do you need some coffee, Red Bull? Yeah. All about the above. <laughs> so let me get uh, a clicker. So first of all, I want to thank uh, Angela specifically for the invitation, obviously, to her team, uh, Dr. Schilling. And uh, this relationship actually started with my friend Denise over at NOCE uh, as well during the pandemic. So I'm happy to be here. Beautiful campus. It makes me want to uh, come back and, and uh, be a student like you, <laughs> okay? Um, I'm going to be talking today about internship strategies, transforming your story into a career narrative. Now, I see that some of you have uh, uh, a notepad, some of you have your cell phones, whatever it is that you want to use, take notes. Because I didn't wake up at 4.30 in the morning to hear myself flap my jaws. I know what I'm going to talk about. I'm here for you. Because I don't know about you. I don't like begging a company to hire me. Anyone like to beg? I don't think so, right? I want to be in a position where I am so good at what I do and employers know, my career counselors know, my network knows that I'm so good that I'm top of mind. Honest to God, true story. When I landed at Long Beach Airport and I turned on my cell phone, I had an email from another college out in the Midwest. Oscar, we have a new student orientation in August and I thought of you. Would you be interested? Who doesn't want to be in that position? Right? Yes? Am I the only one? All right. By the way, I only had one cup of coffee, okay? Here's the agenda. So, first thing is, we're gonna talk about creating your career story. This is a foundation. You gotta be able to tell your story in a very impactful way that captures people's attention, employers, recruiters, etc. Number two, we're gonna talk about your online presence. I know probably every single one of you has some social media account. But I'm going to talk about how to create that online presence so again, you're attracting opportunities. Number three, networking. This is very, very important. Number four, creating your career portfolio, what's included. Five, well, finally, we'll get into the internship uh, search strategies. See, there's many things that we need to do before we get into the strategies. Oftentimes people are like, Oscar, can you just get to the point? Listen, Frank, the point is you need to listen. You need to prepare. If you're going to run a marathon, do you just like show up the day of the marathon? No, you start training. Before you work out, isn't it good to stretch? Because we might injure ourselves. So that's why we have to do some of this. I will leave some time to answer your questions. I'm also going to give you my contact information as well. You're welcome to reach out to me afterwards. All right. Let me talk, tell you first a little bit about my career journey because the things that I share, that I'm going to share with you are things that I do. The word prac trainer does not exist in the English language. I made that word up. I can't. Think of it because I made it up because it is true. I practice what I train other people to do. I did not watch some YouTube video on career services, read some manual, and then all of a sudden I'm like, aha, let me tell you. No, it's from the trials and tribulations, the scars, the bruises that I've experienced in my life and the victories. See, I've actually transitioned careers 11 times. That's a lot. Most companies wouldn't hire me. They're like, based on that, they're like, hey, this guy is not going <laughs> to stick around for a long time, okay? Part of the reason why I transitioned careers so many times is because um, I grew up in the Bay Area. I still live there in the Bay Area, you know, Silicon Valley. So I ended up working in the tech industry for startups. Contrary to popular belief, most startups go out of business. Every year and a half, I was getting laid off. I was on the outside looking in. But 
The most I've ever been out of a job, six weeks. Because early in my career, I learned how to network. I remember calling my friend Barb. May her soul rest in peace. Because she used to put together like inside sales teams at startups. And I'm like, hey, Barb. And it got to the point where it's like, sweetie, did you get laid off? Yeah, Barb. Hey, don't worry about it. I'm working at another company. Let me talk to them. I would call her on a Wednesday. That following Monday, I'd have an interview and I have a job offer that Friday. Pretty cool, huh? Also, I've been hired with having zero experience. I got sick and tired of getting laid off. And a good friend of mine was on the board of the local chamber of commerce and he convinced me to apply for the chamber CEO position. I was like, Maurice, first of all, I have zero experience. Secondly, I don't even know what a chamber of commerce does. Like probably most of you. You hear the word chamber of commerce, but like, what do they really do? My competition had 25 years of chamber experience. She was the interim chamber CEO and the board loved her. What's today, Tuesday? I have a better chance of winning the lottery tomorrow. <laughs> and I got hired. See, I tell you this because many of you, when you look at a job description, you self disqualify yourself because you don't meet most of the requirements. And if you're a minority, you self disqualify yourself even quicker. And if you're a woman in a minority, even quicker. I tell you this folks, because this was a life lesson for me. If I want an opportunity, network, go after it and do the things that I'm going to teach you. Also, I've been, in a situation where a position had been created for me. After almost seven years of working at the chamber, I wanted to try something else. And I had been doing some informational interviews, which I'm going to get into in a little bit, how to do them, and talking to people. And like, you know, most situations, I was talking to a bunch of people and never followed up. LinkedIn was one of them. Talked to my contact there, didn't follow up. And then two months later, I get a phone call. Hey, Oscar, we got the rec approved. Oh, yeah, I pretended like I knew, you know what? Oh, really? Okay, that's awesome. It's a part-time position, one-year contract, doing community relations work. Part-time, about working 20, 25 hours a week, and I got paid almost two and a half times more than I, wa than I did working 60, 70 hours a week as the chamber CEO. Who doesn't want to work less and make almost two and a half times more? Right? Yeah, finally, someone agrees with me here. <laughs> and then lastly, been recruited by employers. Now I know many of you are like, good for you, Oscar. Pat, 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 good for you. Let me share with you some of the obstacles that I've overcome. Number one, believe it or not, English is my second language. Yeah, ESL. Now, granted, I learned how to speak English when I was in kindergarten. So obviously when you're little, you can much, much easier to pick up another language. But the minute I learned how to speak English, at five years old, I became my parents' translator until they passed away almost eight years ago. So maybe you can relate to that. Yeah. Also, low-income kid right here. Free and reduced lunch. Elementary school. There's a line for low-income kids standing there in line eating all that greasy, unhealthy food, which is probably why my arteries are probably clogged today, right? And all my white friends are over here eating some cool food, right? Low income. Also, I was in remedial English classes in college. Now go figure, because in high school, I got all A's in my English classes. And all of a sudden I get to UC Berkeley and like, Oscar, your reading and writing is horrible. You need to go into a remedial English class. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you serious? You're playing a joke on me, right? Nope. It's horrible. Remedial English class. But I, can I show you my transcripts? Because I got A's. Like, did someone lie to me for like four years? Talk about imposter syndrome. My freshman year, I walked into Econ 101, similar seating like this, except there were 800 seats auditorium. 
I sat way up there. All I saw was college professor come up behind the podium, tap it, five seconds go through the syllabus, and she starts lecturing. Like, I could not understand. All I saw my friend for about almost two and a half, two years at Berkeley was 30,000 brains with two feet, and I wasn't one of those. I was one of the, I felt one of the dumb students there. I felt like they made a mistake letting me in. My parents, basic schooling. My dad, first grade education. My mom, middle school. I already told you earlier that they didn't speak English. In case you don't realize this, the number five in English is the same in Spanish. But they couldn't help me with my math homework because they didn't speak English in third grade. And then lastly, my natural personality is an introvert. What? Seriously, Oscar? You gotta be lying. You're not an introvert. See, we have this misconception that anyone that does public speaking and over the last two and a half years talks to Zoom, a bunch of little black squares, because what, what, everyone has their camera turned off, must be an extrovert. No. I'm here to show you that if you really want something, you can change. Maybe I'm here to take away some of your excuses. See, some, all of us, we have a story to tell, folks. Tell your story. All right, first things first. One of the first things that I believe is important is to embrace our journey. I already mentioned to you that we all have a story to tell. Some of us, super genius, graduated from college at three years old. Some of us are 54 and we're about to graduate this semester. Doesn't matter. That's my dad, my little brother in the middle, and me on your right with peach fuzz. When I was in fifth grade, 11 years old, my dad said to me, because in Mexico he was a butcher, and he said to me, hey son, I want you to get the buckets, the knives, and the towels ready. I'm like, whoa, whoa. What are we, for what, Dad? That was the start for about six or seven years. Every Friday, we would go to the slaughterhouses out in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we would kill a pig, cow, goat, and we would sell fresh meat the way they still do it in Mexico and many other foreign countries. I'm not gonna buy that Whole Foods has fresh meat. Not true, all right? And here's the thing. I actually hated doing that. I was embarrassed. Some of you are like, Oscar, can you like go to the next slide? This picture's kind of gross. And also, I just disappeared from my friends because I was busy helping my parents on the weekends. But today, when I look back at that experience that I was embarrassed and I hated it, I learned some very valuable life lessons. Number one, I learned a work ethic. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 17 or 150 years old. You will not outwork me. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning today to hop on a plane. I have more energy than 99.9% .9 of you. Some of you are falling asleep right now. And you just rolled out of bed. You're not going to outwork me. Number two, I learned delayed gratification. Mom, Dad, can, 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 can you buy me that BMX bike? No, son. Please. No, son, we don't have any money. Yes, you do. No, we don't have any money. Mm, I would get so upset at my parents because I didn't understand what they meant. They're like, son, we need to take that money and reinvest it back into our business. Mm. See, delayed gratification, all of you are practicing it today. Thank you for being here. You could have been out there just chilling like a villain under the sun because we haven't had much of that this winter and spring. But you're here making a sacrifice to learn. And number three, teamwork. Especially working with family. Some of you that work with family, you're like, oh yeah, I gotta put up with a lot of stuff and they gotta put up with me. Now think about this. Work ethic, delayed gratification, I mean teamwork, are those not good skills that an employer wants? Yes, no? 
Yeah. See? Embrace your journey, folks. Let's talk about your career story. All right? Why is your career story important? Many reasons. See, when you have a strong career story, first of all, I want you to know that 94% of recruiters are on LinkedIn, yet only 36% of candidates are on LinkedIn. So if you're looking for an internship, for a job, and the recruiters or hire managers are on LinkedIn, doesn't it make sense to throw your, if you're into fishing, throw your pole where there's a bunch of fish? See, if you know this, how come you're not on LinkedIn? Your career center has LinkedIn workshops, okay? Take advantage of that. But here's the other, and I apologize for the goofiness here, the way this slide looks. But here's the other reason. If you apply for a job online, you have a 3% chance of getting an interview. Listen to what I just said. If you apply for a job online, you have a 3% chance of getting an interview. But if you are referred to an opportunity, to a job, and the person is at a director level or higher, you have a 91% chance of getting hired. The goal is to get hired, right? Not to be going through a bunch of interviews. Hired. So if the person is a director level or higher, you have a 91% chance of getting hired if that person referred you. Remember the story I told you about the Chamber of Commerce? Just in case, if you're not familiar with the org chart, my friend was on the board. The board is on top. The CEO, the president, reports to the board, and then staff. What did I just tell you? That's what happened. But see, many of us, and I'm, again, I'm going to cover this. Many of us are like, but I'm afraid to talk to Dr. Schilling, you know, the president of Cypress, Cypress College. Why? Why? I'm afraid to reach out to the vice president. Why? Because I don't know what to say. I know. I felt that too. But I'm going to give you some techniques, some approaches to reach out to them. Okay. So your story. There are five parts here. Write this down. Number one is your why. Now, typically, there are two types of why. First is the personal why. Why are you interested in kinesiology? Then there is the why of what's in it for that prospective employer. Or if you're going to work for yourself, what's in it for your clients? Let me show you the example, the difference between the two. On a personal level, the reason why I'm here today and I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, got on a plane and I'm here, is because on a personal level, I love helping other people dream bigger, I love inspiring them, and I love serving them, helping them. That's on a personal level. And yes, I know for you, you're like, thanks, Oscar, I appreciate it, you know? Or some of you are like, oh good, you know, your mom and dad raised you well, Oscar. But that's about it. But the why, what's in it for you, is I empower you, so opportunities come to you. You see the difference? One is about me personally, like my value. The other one's what's in it either for that prospective employer or again, if you were in business for yourself, uh, a client. So think about that. When you are, inter uh, when you are I interviewing for like internships, you're personal, but also what is it, what's in it for that prospective employer, the person or the company that's giving you the internship. Okay. Most people focus on the, just what's in it for me. So, number two, what are some of your personality traits? Okay. Number three, talk about your current career journey. Or some of you might be thinking, well, but Oscar, you know, the work that I've been doing isn't very relatable to kinesiology or whatnot. Okay, I can understand. Talk about your vision. Where are you going? What do you want to accomplish? In fact, for most young professionals, college students like yourself, I teach them how to talk more about their vision because you're right, you know, you don't have quite a lot of experience. Or if someone is transitioning careers, talk about your vision, where are you going, okay, what do you want to do? Any awards or recognitions that you received? 
Now, I know immediately what comes to our mind is, you know, some kind of certificate, trophy, employee of the month, the year, et cetera. Of course, yes. But again, oftentimes when we're just starting off, we don't have those. How about a simple, maybe you received an email from a professor, your career counselor, um, maybe a client praising you, thanking you. Hey, Oscar, thank you very much, you know, for helping me uh, get through the challenges that, that I uh, experienced, you know, with whatever product or service. Or maybe if you're connected with them on LinkedIn, you ask them to write you a recommendation. Boom, screenshot. And then lastly, um, tailor your career story to that position and company. This is something that we do with the resume, okay? You should be doing tailor your resume to the opportunity, right? To the company and so forth. Don't just be sending out standard boilerplates. These five parts is what makes up your career story. Another way to look at these five parts, think of them as if, if there's questions. Like Oscar asked me to answer my why. Oscar asked me to list my personality traits, question mark. Right? Boom, boom, boom. Let me show you an example of what not to do, all right? John Doe, I'm actually connected with this person, but no need to reveal any actual names or anything like that to get the point across. This person on their about section of LinkedIn, where you, that's where you write your career story, has educator, teacher, minister, and manager, consultant with experience in board governance, nonprofit and corporate, international business development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, this person is highly accomplished, right? I mean, highly accomplished. But let me ask you a question. Is this how you talk if we were like to grab a cup of coffee? I'm like, hey, John, so tell me about yourself. Well, Oscar, um, educator, teacher, minister, manager, consultant. I don't know about you, but you know what would go through my mind as I, was, I would be listening to him? This dude is weird. <laughs> I'm like, can you just talk normal? <laughs> <laughs> like, just talk normal. You see how you can be so skilled, but just poor people, poor communication skills, poor ability to market yourself. Shoot yourself in the foot. Let me show you an example here. So this is Angelica. She wants to be a professor of ethnic studies. And she writes, I am a student at California State University of Monterey Bay who aspires to one day become a professor of ethnic studies. My goal as a future educator is to help create an engaging, creative, and strong educational foundation for future generations. My passion for education has been an ongoing cause that has led me to volunteers for organizations such as Mesa de la Comunidad and the City of Mountain View's Youth Advisory Committee. By pursuing my passion for academia, I hope to expand my horizons and gain more insight into a world of limitless possibilities. Folks, is she a college professor? Does she have any experience being a college professor? What is she doing? Someone's, yeah, buddy. She's persuading them that she really genuinely wants to be one and will be a good fit. Yeah, selling her vision. You see what I mean? Painting your vision. Who would you want to talk to? Her? Or John? Yeah. Folks, honestly, I just shut up right now and be done. And like, if you just do this, probably like eight or nine out of 10 times, you're gonna get an interview for an internship. I hope, I mean, I, this is really, like I really want this to sink in with you. Know how to craft your story and, and tell your vision. Because, you can't get hired unless you get your foot in the door and get that interview. I'll, I'll tell you something. Just last week, I was in Hawaii doing a similar talk. And afterwards, a student came up to me, Oscar, I, I keep reaching out to people, you know, and, you know, like they say they want to help me, but then they don't follow through, et cetera, and so forth. You know, can you review these questions for me? I am said, sure, send me, you know, email me. She did, I was traveling, Friday was my birthday. I was, 
I was having a good time this weekend, okay? I deserve it. I got back to her yesterday. And I said, hey, sorry, you know, it took me a while traveling and my birthday and all that, you know, weekend and so forth. I said, um, I have some time next week will be better because I'm, I'm traveling tomorrow and et cetera and so forth. Oh, thank you very much, you know, but um, I have to submit them by April 5th. Like, oh, I replied back. Oh, I'm sorry. I said, I, I must have missed the April 5th deadline. I said, you know what? I'm available today at 1030 Pacific time for about a 30 minute call. I never heard back from her. I don't know what happened. But my whole point to this is, you see, like sometimes we think it's like, oh, what am I doing? And sometimes we just need to look in the mirror and like, change. <laughs> all right, let's talk about online presence here. All right. Now, social media is not going away. The internet's not going away. Okay, in fact, now we have chat GBT, AI, the metaverse, right? All these things. Some people still today, they're like, well, Oscar, I'm a very private person, so I'm not online. <sighs> Frank, I get it, you're private. But can I tell you something? There are websites that I can enter your name and they will tell me where you live. <laughs> and depending on your age, if you're like my age, where you've lived for the last 20 years. And who? And you don't even enter that information. It's scary. I know. It's scary. But it's there. What am I trying to get at? Embrace the online presence, but instead do it in a way where you are putting out content that you want that's relative to what you're looking to accomplish. Imagine back in the day when all there was was horses and cars first started showing up. And you as a horse owner, you're like, huh, I will never buy a car. You know, those things are just a fad. Today, you'd be the weird one if you're out there on Catella on a horse. <laughs> okay? All right, folks. Let me just show you a couple key things here. Uh, I'll use LinkedIn. All right? But some of these concepts apply across the board, okay, and other platforms, all right? But first off, like, for example, on LinkedIn, right underneath your name, um, that area, they call it a headline. That's a very um, prime real estate on LinkedIn. Um, don't just put student. I see oftentimes student. I'm like, how are you differentiating yourself from the gazillion other students that are say the same thing on LinkedIn? You don't. Maybe here's some recommendations. One is what you can do is use keywords. Think about the skills that you have the skills that are key for that particular internship or job that you're applying, and assuming you have some knowledge of those skills, put them in there, that section. If you are not sure what type of internship or job you're looking to apply, then maybe what you're interested in. Aspiring kinesiologist. Aspiring professor of ethnic studies. Aspiring nurse. Expire, aspiring software developer, whatever. You follow me? The word aspiring is very powerful. Even just doing that change would separate you from a bunch of the other students. Next, there's a section called featured section, also another prime uh, real estate area on uh, the LinkedIn platform. First off, up at the top is where you write your career story. Remember I shared the career story part? That's where you write it. I encourage you to write it in the first person. Make people feel like you are virtually sitting, they are virtually sitting across from you for coffee. Kind of personalize it a little. This takes a little bit of time. In my case, I lead with like some vulnerability, authenticity. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I say, I'm an introvert turned international speaker and trainer. I'm a first generation professional. My parents had less than a middle school education. As an American, my dual cultural identity has been an asset and a liability. In the US, I'm too Mexican. In Mexico, I'm too gringo. Like who talks like this? A professional. You know what most professionals do? Oh, you're Mosca Garcia. I have trained blah, blah, blah. And um, you know, I have an MBA. Listen, 
Good for you. I'm not taking away anything from your credentials. But we have to remember the person reading it at the other end is a human being. And the way to connect meaningfully with someone is to connect with their heart first, then their mind. See, 99% of the people try to connect with the mind first. They don't even try to connect with the heart. That's why a lot of times people come across very cold. No. Connect with their heart first. Also, add some examples of your work under the featured section. I'm going to get into it a little bit here, right? Tell you, show you some. Work experience. Internships, volunteer work. I, actually, I'll talk to you a little bit about volunteer work. But if you need some help in terms of how to write this work experience, either ask your current employer, boss, manager for a job description of the position that you're doing or internship position, all right? Or just Google it. And assuming you've done that work, just copy some of that wording because HR professionals are really good at creating job descriptions. I'm not. And, and they will have those key words that oftentimes recruiters, HR managers, et cetera, search for. Because, right? So just save yourself some time. Volunteer uh, experience. Again, oftentimes, and this happened to me early in my career when I was in college, I volunteered. But oftentimes, volunteer experience is just as important or is valued by employers uh, just as important as regular work experience. Add it. Also, for those of you that want to, I actually encourage you, look at creating your personal website. And I like to use my friend Jamila as an example because she's kept it very, very simple. What's included in a personal website? Your about me section, remember your story basically? Your skills, portfolio. Portfolio is examples of your work, it could be written, video, photos, whatever. A blog, if you're into writing, maybe you're into, again, video, uh, video blogs. And then, of course, your contact information. How can people get a hold of you? Very simple. I mean, there's templates out there that you can just very easily create this. See, if I was talking to, doing something similar to 40 plus, I'd be like, listen, Go talk to some students over at Cypress College. They will help you, okay? I think many of you know how to do this. Even, and if you don't, go find someone that, that can. I'm not a software developer, but it's not going to stop me from creating something, okay? Networking. So, like I mentioned to you, my natural personality is an introvert. I struggled talking to people. I remember early in my career, we would go to these conferences. Like, for, for example, Tomorrow, you, you have the career fair. I remember going to my school's career fair. I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I say? You know, right? And I would see the employers there. And like some of the uh, more popular employers, they were just swarmed with students there. And I'm like, am I just supposed to like walk up and like, or when do I interrupt? Because, right? Like, it's just like a feeding frenzy. What, what do I say? So I struggled with that for a long time. And as an introvert, those of you that are introverts, you know we talk to ourselves a lot. So I kept talking to myself. I'm like, but how can I like reframe networking? And I realized networking just being a friend. I'm a friendly person. Hi, I'm Oscar Garcia. What's your name? Steven. Hi, I'm Oscar Garcia. And if and it take here's the thing, it takes two. If Steven says, Hi, I'm Steven, great, first step. But if Stephen does not reciprocate, I also need to have a thick skin and realize, like, move on. Hi, I'm Oscar Garcia. What's your name? Cecil. Cecil. Hey. Maybe she says hello. Maybe she doesn't. I move on. See, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Numbers don't lie. After now training over 40,000 students and professionals, Here's what the numbers say. Most of you, the majority of you, I will never hear from you again. I won't. Even though I'm gonna give you my contact and everything, right? I won't. 
That's just the way it works. I had of the talks that I did these last, this last week, this is how many students connected with me. Two. I'm like, yeah, that's about right. But see, those two students stand out in my mind because of what I just told you. See, that's another thing, folks, that I learned in my career. Observe the masses and do the opposite. Observe the masses, do the opposite. You notice no one's sitting in the front row? Pay attention next time at talks that hardly anyone sits in the front row, even the extroverts. I caught on to that early in my career. And I said, I'm going to play a game. Just myself. Because I, honestly, I really looked up to extroverts. Okay? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sit in the front row. I would sit in the front row, right? And then uh, I would look back, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's Joe and Steve, extroverts. They're like standing up in the, in the back of the room. And this game that I would play would be, it was just like a little victory for me. And that victory, imagine it being a grain of sand in this bottle. And after 30 years, this bottle is overflowing with a beach full of sand. Because that's what I do. Observe the masses, do the opposite. See, that's another lesson right there. I could, same thing. I could shut up right now. You do that. Amazing. You know how many times people go visit your career counselors? Very few. Go visit them. Become first name. You know, when I was struggling in um, my remedial English class, I went to go my, to my college professor because I'm like, listen, if nothing else, this guy's going to see that I put in effort. Maybe he'll pass me, give me a pity C minus and pass me. <laughs> like, oh gosh, it's, ah. Oscar, okay, your writing is horrible. But man, you put in some effort. Go ahead, go, move on. I have faith in you. Here's one of the, the pages, one of the places to start as an introvert, okay? Those of you that, again, still struggle, like, what do I say? Right? How do I connect? Follow your school's LinkedIn page on social media. On LinkedIn, there is the alumni tab. If you click on the alumni tab on the bottom, scroll down just a little bit, and you're going to see a change. And now you're going to be able to create a search, a query based on what company alumni work at, what city or region, what year they graduated, major, etc. So, buddy, I forgot your name again. Tell me again. Yes. Issa. Cecil. And then no, Issa. Issa. I'm sorry. Issa. Sorry. Issa. Issa. <laughs> I'm 54. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Aiden. 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 Okay. Because Aiden, you were the one in kinesiology, right? So, like, if I was Aiden in kinesiology, I would look to see alumni that maybe major in kinesiology or work in that field. And so you go from almost 33,000 followers to a very small number. I don't know how many there is. It could be 10, 20. I don't know. My guess is it's a small number. And now what you do is this. You, here's, here's, honestly, like, take us with your phone. Take a picture of this, okay? Because this is, just change this template up. Imagine you, okay, this is an alumni. Hi, uh, Giselle. I see that you graduated from Cypress College. I'm a student at Cypress interested in pursuing a career in commercial real estate. Would you be open to connecting? Change it up. I see you're in kinesiology or you know, sports medicine or whatnot. I'm a student at Cypress. I'm pursuing a career in kinesiology. Would you be open to connecting? This simple, just change it up. It's a template. I guarantee you, probably nine out of 10 of the alumni from Cyprus will connect. I connect with students from Cal. Because, like, I know that feeling. Like, and you want to help. Let's talk about the career portfolio. All right. First of all, your career portfolio, I want you to think of it as. Um, it's like 
you know how an artist would have like examples of their work, drawings maybe, right? Photos, etc. If you're into music, a DJ, you're gonna have like, hey, this is my repertoire of music. Same thing, right? You're gonna have your examples of your work. All right. So content. Start creating some relevant content if you haven't done so already. Some of you actually, for some of your classes, I'm willing to bet that you've created some kind of a PowerPoint presentation. Maybe you've written a paper, maybe you've done some research. Start putting all that together. If it's online, maybe whatever, an online folder created, and that's where you start putting this information of your career portfolio. Let me show you some examples here from <clears throat> going back to my friend Jamila. She has it on, actually online. <coughs> some, um, she uh, does some graphic designs and up above, it's a little hard to see, but see, she actually talks about what applications she uses, Canva and Adobe Creative Suite. And then here are some examples of her work. See, she's smart because she also lists the software that she uses and guess where her first job out of college was? Adobe. Isn't that cool? She listed it. She's got videos, okay? Videos she's taken, et cetera, boom, right there, video. I mean, look, video samples, all right? And, and look, equipment that she used, GoPro Hero, movie editing, iMovie, excuse me, iMovie editing software. See, she's talking about those skills that she's using. See, me as a prospective employer, when I look at her personal website, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, hmm, GoPro, yeah. We need some help with that, someone that knows her. I move, oh, pfft, awesome, okay. You, it just, again, you're opening, you're, 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 you're feeding that prospective employer um, with kind of ideas of like saying, yes, I wanna to talk to this person instead of like, I wonder if they have blah, blah, blah experience. Again, more examples here, all right? This is uh, actually from her blog, right? Look, about the, uh, the author. Okay, let's get into internship strategies here. So, there's a lot here, but let me give you some key ones here. First off, for, as far as internships, please stop throwing a bunch of mud up against the wall, hoping something sticks. Actually, it saddens me when I read online and someone says they apply to 100, 200 jobs, 500 jobs. Seriously, I've seen people post that they apply to 500 jobs and they have zero interviews. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's demoralizing, folks. It's a hit on your self-image. I also think, because again, I'm, there's a logical side of me that it's like, like if I bang my head, up against the wall a hundred times, like, do I need to go to 200 or 500 to realize that that hurts? And that maybe I need to stop and I'm like, oh, there's a door up there. But Oscar, that's what it says, you know, that the company says there are the instructions that I need to apply online. Bob, you don't listen to your parents, so what's your point? <laughs> well, what, happens if, what happens if they get mad at me? That could happen. But then I won't get the job, Oscar. That can happen too. And I'm gonna tell you something, it happened to me. One of the times when I got laid off, I'm like, you know what? I was applying for an inside sales position. I said, I'm gonna use the same sales techniques that I used to get past the gatekeeper and get to the decision maker. And I did. I got to the hiring manager, the department manager that was hiring for the inside sales. This is not his name, but hello, it's David. Oh, hi, David, this is Oscar Garcia. Um, I see on your website that you're looking to hire for an inside sales rep. Yeah? Don't you know how to read instructions, directions? Uh, yes. Okay, well, do what it says. Click. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think I just blew it. I did. And after about five minutes of pity party, me having a pity party, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just used the techniques that he wants his inside salespeople to use and he just blackballed me? B 
beat it, David. See, folks, you need to empower yourself too. I don't need 10 job offers. I just need one that matches what I'm looking for, matches the company culture and vice versa. Odds are, if I would have gone to work for David, I probably wouldn't have liked him as a boss. Think about that, folks. Empower yourself. Quit letting these employers over here, you know, like yank your chain. So again, target list 10 to 20 companies, okay? Next, it could be LinkedIn, Indeed, uh, Google. Actually, one of the sites that I recommend is Google Jobs. And I don't mean like as in finding jobs at Google, but if you log in <coughs> with your Gmail and open up a browser, type in Google Jobs, there is a tool that you, it's, and it's super cool, and it's very, you can get very detailed. You can then search, uh, put in the criteria, what type of company, internships, titles, location, pay, I mean, again, very detailed. And then it gives you a list of opportunities, job opportunities, internship opportunities. And, and if you're logged in with your Gmail, you can save that as an, uh, an alert, as a job alert. So now every time Google finds that criteria, it matches your criteria, it sends you an email, and what it does is it, it um, uh, goes out to all these other job sites. Indeed, LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, whatever. And, but now you just have one location where you can go versus kind of going to multiple websites. Super cool. I encourage you to use that feature, okay? Video resume, I'm gonna show you an example here. This is another area that oftentimes, many of us are afraid to be in front of the camera. But employers today, especially since during the pandemic and even since the pandemic, uh, are sending questions to prospective uh, employees, to job prospects, and say, hey, here are five questions, record the answer and uh, send it back to us. That's it. Wow, like, oh. okay. Why? Well, see, when we're on video, our personality comes through. Like, have you ever tried to read someone's personality off a resume? Pretty hard. You can kind of do it, but it's, it's not the same when you're video recording. Informational interviews, I'm gonna give you some tips here. But informational interviews, essentially, for those of you that don't know, is you're not necessarily asking for a job or an internship opportunity, but rather you're getting information either about that person or the industry. Okay? And you're also doing is building a relationship with that person. And then I'm gonna share a little bit about chat GBT. But here's an example in terms of that target list, okay? The Walt Disney Company. See, again, here, uh, this is LinkedIn, but you can go to jobs, right, to see what opportunities there are. You can click on people, and what it does, LinkedIn actually gives you some of the, it gives you a bunch of people that have worked at LinkedIn, but it, it's nice, it lifts you some of the, it lists some of the prominent em employees at LinkedIn. But remember earlier, the uh, Cypress College page, the alumni section, you can type in Disney and see if any, anyone from Disney um, graduated from Cypress College, if this is where you wanna work. Hey, I'm, Kind of thinking of like, I would love to explore Disney College, or Disney College, <laughs> work at Disney. You know, would you be open to an opportunity, to an informational interview? Tell me more about, you know, how you got the job, what the interview process, what it's like working there. Also, here's the, you know, again, example of LinkedIn jobs, the page you can get. But personally, again, I prefer Google Jobs, okay, to, to do this. Um, here's the, the Google Jobs uh, uh, screenshot here. Okay, let me show you really quickly video resume. Hi, I'm Naya J. Curry, originally from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I currently reside in Tucson, Arizona, where I'm pursuing a Bachelor's of Science degree in business with an emphasis in marketing. While at the University of Arizona, I have been able to maintain three part time jobs along with a full academic schedule. Some of my experience 
includes being manager for the men's tennis team, being a student worker for the Elder College of Management, and previously being an intern for the University of Arizona football team. Working in sports has allowed me to gain cross-functional skills, remain disciplined, and thrive in fast-paced environments. I have intangible assets, which include hustle, self-motivation, and a strong work ethic. I am currently seeking full-time opportunities from an innovative company that is looking for an associate who is eager, ready, and willing to learn. Please feel free to reach out to me with career or business-related opportunities. Thanks for watching. Okay, everyone. 59 seconds. That's how long this video is. So here's my question to you. What do you think of, how does she come across? Professional, is it boring? Yes. I mean, she's, like, she's quiet. She did step by step slowly. Like, speak out herself. Yes. So slowly, she said that, she speaks up. And so she, she's articulating her points. Yes, thank you. Yes. Confident. She sounded confident. Remember what I told you about video and how we come across too as well, right? You hear and you seeing her too as well. Yes. She's passionate. She's passionate about. Yeah. Yes. 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 How about over here? Anyone over here on this side of the room? <laughs> Thoughts? What do you think about? How she, do you like it? Or is it? I mean, any critique? Anything you would change? Recommend changing? Anyone? No? Like it? Okay. I like to show this here because, again, think about this. I, about, about, also about a week ago, I had a friend of mine who reached out to me. He's 60 years old. He's looking for employment. He asked me, hey, Oscar, just want to let you know I'm looking, if you can think of it. I'm like, yeah, of course, absolutely. He's, he's a dear friend of mine. I love the guy. And I asked him to send me um, whether it's his resume or he actually has um, uh, like a, a one pager that just bullet point, okay? Because it helps me remember like how to talk about him. I, I got like all of us, we have so many things on our mind, okay? But if you sent a video link like this, that's even better. Again, this is something that very few people do. I, for a long time, was embarrassed about being in front of the camera. I've gotten over it. In fact, I'm actually a lazy writer and I prefer to just do a video, <laughs> okay? But, it, but here's the nice thing about videos. If you don't like the way it looks, re-record it. Early on, before I posted videos like on social media, true story, one of my first videos, I re-recorded it 17 times. And the truth is, the first time it was fine. That was, you know, hypercritical. Just re-record it until you feel good. See, when you public speak, ah, you say something like, oh, I, I, mm, I said it. Mm. It's not like you can, nah, let's rewind. Video, you can edit it. Hi. Oops, sorry. Okay, let's talk about informational interview. Let me give you a quick structure here. These are very important to do. Remember, you are seeking information from that individual about their career journey, the position, um, the company, some tips, et cetera, and so forth. So one is email them, call them. You know, you obviously have some kind of relationship or started to build some kind of relationship with them. Remember the alumni approach? The alumni would be a great group of people to do informational interviews. Before you reach out to them, make sure you research the contact and the company. There is one person here, and I, don't, I can't see it because I'm recording with my phone, but there's one person, well, I don't know if you're in here. If you are, raise your hand. But at least one person that I know of from Cyprus that looked me up on LinkedIn before coming here. Are you here, that person? Yeah, I know who it is because it shows up. Everyone, like Cyprus did an amazing job of like promoting it. I mean, how cool, right? Like, even my picture's out there on the marquee. I'm like, ah, look, mom, I made it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the career. But my point, though, it's not really, it, it, that's not my point. My point is, folks, today, look people up. See, remember I told you observe the masses and do the opposite? That's another thing. Very few people do the research. 
And if you're not doing it for me, I guarantee you, you're not doing it for uh, other people, unless you're, because I, I doubt it. You're like, I doubt it. You're like, Oscar's a jerk. I'm not going to research him. <laughs> no. Okay? Research people and the company ahead of time. Get ready to give your why pitch. Remember the why here, what's in it for you personally, but it's also what's in it or why are you interested in that industry, that job, that opportunity. Be positive. Like, what are you talking about, Oscar? See, th let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm telling you this again from personal experience. Come to situations, like events like this. Oh, hey, Oscar. Um, I'm looking for an internship and a job. Can you, like, keep me in mind? Sure, John. I honestly, I will. But I don't know about you, but I'm going to remember Tigger better than Eeyore. I'm more likely to recommend Tigger than Eeyore. Because that's my reputation too. If I'm like, hey Angela, I want to, I want to introduce you to uh, you know, a friend of mine, contact that provide social media services. And it's like it flops, goes sideways. I mean, Angela and I have a good relationship that obviously she's not gonna be like, oh Oscar, you know, you're like, what but you know, it's kind of like, kind of like, what? What happened here? Right? So here in this room, folks, listen, it's okay. As we say in Spanish, familia, we're family here. You can come afterwards, you can cry on my shoulder, you know, like tell me exactly how horrible it's been, tough, etc. But when you're out there doing an informational interview, put on that smile. First impressions. And then be prepared to answer questions and ask questions. See, part of the reason for researching people ahead of time, because you can formulate some questions. As an introvert, it takes me a while to kind of warm up. So I would even actually write down questions to ask the person that I already knew the answer. Like the easy questions, because I was warming up. I was stretching. Okay. Follow this, folks. I'm also going to tell you one more thing that's not even on here, okay? When you are doing this informational interview with someone, say to them, excuse me, Angela, I'm so, thank you very much for your time. Can I ask you a question? Sure, Oscar. Angela, is there anything I can do for you? Now, you're probably thinking like, Oscar, but I'm a college student. Like, what can I do for a professional? What can I offer them? What can I give them? How about giving them a compliment? Ever thought about that? Because I'm going to tell you something, folks. After almost 40,000 people, over 40,000 people that I've trained, I can count and now two hands on my two feet, how many people ever came up to me and asked me if they can do something for me. And I'm not looking for you to do something for me. It's just that you had the audacity to think about the other person. Because I told you, it's those little things. I told you, observe the masses and do the opposite. Observe the masses, do the opposite. You're going to stand out. I'm going to give you five pro tips here. Please connect with people on LinkedIn. That's right now. That's I don't get paid to LinkedIn. I could care less about LinkedIn. Okay. But that's the gorilla out there in the industry and in the professional platform to do it. Start when you're out there interning, if you do have an internship or even a job right now, create what I call a career journal. What do I mean? You know what a journal is, right? You write stuff down or a diary, whatever you call it. Okay. Wait, so every week, just make a, 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 on your mobile app, on notes, if you have an iPhone or whatever. Okay. And just start, do a quick bullet point of your accomplishments for the week or some of the roles or things, you know, just a quick little journal. Because now you begin to document and start thinking about later on, you can reference like, oh, I remember. I remember, you know, last semester, blah, 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 this happened, blah, blah, blah. You can also even share this with your boss. Next, always think about when you're doing an internship or at a job, you know, what are 
some of the challenges that that company, that department, or maybe in that position is experiencing? And what are some possible solutions? Because every department, every company has challenges, folks. It's not perfect. But like one of my bosses, when I worked for a startup company, said, hey, Oscar, you know what? We're going to have some challenges here. And I, I, you can come to me, let me know what's going wrong, uh, and so forth. He says, but I want you to also come with a solution. We might not implement what you said, but come also with a solution. Because again, it's another way for you to stand out, folks, that you really care, you're vested. Stay in touch. Once you leave that internship, or even if you don't get an opportunity, like don't burn bridges, but even if you don't get that internship job, but you connecting on LinkedIn, you're able to stay in touch. I have some opportunities that four years ago, I started a conversation and they just, this year materialized. But I stay in touch with people. And then lastly, number five, share some value added content that's relevant to that opportunity. But if you're like kinesiologist, I mean, I don't know, share some, share some articles. And by that, that could be, like if I was already a professional in your field, maybe you share a, a, a link to a convention that's coming up. Hey, Oscar, I came across this, you know, this convention for kinesiologists this summer. It's in Disney World. You're going to be there? That, no, I mean, me, right? Like, if you ask me, like, right? Maybe I have the same answer. It's like, hey, no. But all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, you're staying in touch. You're adding some value to me. Because maybe I didn't know about it. Maybe I could reply back. I'm like, but hey, ouch. I didn't even know. I've been so busy working, traveling, whatever. Thank you. Did you see? Like, listen, keep posting what you have for lunch, keep posting your six pack, keep posting your selfies from this angle because it makes you look skinny. I'm not telling you not to do that. Share value added content that's relevant to what you are interested in doing, folks. Okay? I'm not here to tell you not to have fun. Have fun, I have a lot of fun. Follow me on Instagram, I just posted something there last night, I think it was, like, Oscar, why do you work on Sundays? And the next image was a video of Bacalar. It's like the Maldives in Mexico on a Monday. There's no one out there. I'm like, because I have the whole lagoon to myself on Mondays. I have fun, folks. All right, chat GBT, and I'm going to open up to some, with some questions. I'm not going to get into, obviously, because this really requires kind of on the laptop and, okay. But... ChatGBT is a tool. It's not an end-all, be-all. Stop literally copying word for word what you type in here. It's a tool. You can use it to research companies. Like literally type in there, tell me about blah, blah, blah. Like pretend you're talking to a human being because the more information you feed it, the more it, uh, um, it, it, uh, uh, detail it can, it can get and, and help, helpful the information. You can also use it to help you with the cover letter. You can start off. I'm gonna be, I'm a, whatever, second year, my last year in, in college, and I've taken these courses in kinesiology. Sorry, but I keep kind of here because you just <laughs> you stayed you stuck in my mind, okay? Um, kinesiology, and I want to pursue a career uh, um, as a, a, a sports trainer uh, in Major League Baseball. Write me a cover letter that talks about these five blah, 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 points. Don't copy word for word. Take it. Use some of those points to guide you, okay? Your professional summary that I mentioned earlier, that story, okay? You can also use it. Remember those five questions that I, uh, parts to the story, your story? Boom, 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 enter those. Say, chat GBT, write me a, 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 a professional summary that I can use on LinkedIn using these five uh, points. Boom, 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 boom. 
prepare for an interview. Give me 10 questions, interview questions for whatever the internship job that I'm, LinkedIn summary, okay? Use it, it's a powerful tool, folks, and it's just getting better and better. All right, but be smart about it. Like I said, it's a tool. It's not meant to be, you know, your little cheat sheet here that I'm just gonna use it, all right? Humanize it. I'm all for high touch, high tech, high touch. High tech, high touch. And then also email messages as well to craft them. All right, I'm gonna leave you with an internship search plan. So these are some things that I recommend you do on a daily basis. So you can start tomorrow, even though it says Monday here. This is, think of it as your homework assignment. Complete your career story. Next, reach out to three to five alumni. Remember that example template, message template that I shared? Do that. Create your target list of 10 to 15 companies. Create that job alert on Google Jobs. And then start updating your online presence or your career portfolio. After a while, maybe after the, you know, a month, some of this stuff you're not gonna do. A lot of it, you know, you're gonna focus more maybe on contacting, building your network, and uh, applying for some internships, reaching out to some potential uh, employers. Okay, you got this, folks? Everyone, yes? Awesome. Okay, final thought. Let me tell you what employers look for, all right? They look for professionalism, and I put that in quotes because depending on the industry, et cetera, and so forth, okay? I get it. Initiative. Are you easy to get along with? Good personality, right? friendly, et cetera, and so forth, do you follow through? There's many more. But do you notice how this doesn't say you have to have a degree in STEM? Doesn't say that you need to have a million dollars in your bank account? You can be an ESL kid. You can be an introvert. See, folks, when I started to understand this, all of a sudden, I realized that I also had a brain just like those 30,000 other students at Cal. In fact, I'm gonna tell you something. Just before the pandemic in 2019, the Cal Alumni Association invited me to go do a training, a career development training, and guess who was in the audience online? Vice President, they were Cal uh, students, okay? Uh, or former Cal students, Vice Presidents, CEOs, engineers, these were all the people that I, I used to look up to. And I'm like, wow, life is interesting. Because here today, this introvert, ESL, low-income kid, is teaching them how to attract opportunities. Isn't that cool? You don't, listen, I don't need you to agree with me, OK? I know it's cool, OK? All right. Open up to some questions. You can share, you know, uh, at least one takeaway. Here's my contact information. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I have a podcast called Career Talk with OG. Um, Instagram, YouTube. We have over 274 videos on YouTube. There's my email address. Website. Like, honestly, like, uh, seriously, like I told you in the beginning, I'm very accessible. I just need to give you my social security number. <laughs> all right folks but um everyone i believe in you you do these things you reach out to career services angela and her team you will attract opportunities and remember tomorrow when you go to the career fair you don't need 10 job offers 10 internships you need one that matches what you're looking for and what they're looking for. It's like a relationship, all right? I'm gonna open it up to some questions. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have, are we here till two, Angela? Or? Yeah, you're good. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes. Anyone, any, uh, you want to share a takeaway or if you have a question, happy to answer it. Yes. Oh, you are? You're following me on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you see there are my antics. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone, anyone want to share a takeaway from today? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Everyone, I try to break it down very simple, you know, the, the steps. And also, I want, you know, my goal is that when I walk away from here, that you <clears throat> believe in yourself. Empower yourself. All right. Thank you. Yes? I've been having trouble trying to write cover letters, and I've been working with um, someone in the department of rehab and trying to write cover letters. So how do you write, like, a perfect cover letter when it comes to, like, going to the career fair and, and talking to these employers about the, what jobs are interested in? Because I'm pretty good with, like, kind of telling the resume, but I struggle with writing cover letters. Yeah, so great question. First of all, um, I'm all about shortcuts, okay? <laughs> okay. So um, make sure that you ask if a cover letter is necessary. So that way you're not writing it just, just because it's, you've been doing it or whatnot. Um, secondly, in terms of actually writing it is, one, make sure if you haven't done so, um, uh, meet with uh, Angela and, and the team, someone, the, one of the career advisors, so they can help you. Because there's a lot of nuances in terms of, that I don't know about your story, um, the the job that you're looking for. Sometimes when, uh, in the uh, instructions, it will say, "Please write a cover letter," and it tells you like some points to cover. Um, the other thing is, is that I would start if you haven't done so, start um, experiment with ChatGPT and uh, entering even and en en enter like. The cover letter that you've written, or some of the cover letters, and say, hey, Chat GPT, um, please um, rewrite this uh, letter and cover uh, whatever points, which actually takes me to the other. Get some feedback from people. If people are, try to understand what is it about your cover letter that is missing. Oh, it's an artificial intelligence. Okay. Yeah. Can you the, it on your, your phone or your uh, it, it, it's on the laptop. Okay. Yeah, you can create a free account. Yeah, sorry, if you don't know what channel, it's artificial intelligence. It's like, it's a, like a website that you enter some information, almost kind of like Google search, but except that you're, it's kind of all, almost like the way you write, it's kind of like a little bit sort of conversational. And I also was a little confused because like the more jobs you have, like should, is it better to tailor the resume to one page or is it okay if it's multiple pages? Uh, again, tailor it to the, the job, okay? And then uh, as far as, see, it, it, there's some industries, like for example, in, in academia and education, where yeah, you know, having multiple pages is acceptable. Your CV, in fact, they call it a CV versus a resume. Um, and then there's some industries, like in the private sector, that's like one, maybe two max uh, type pages. So it just depends again on the industry, the job that uh, you're applying to. Yeah, and 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 uh, so here's here. So remember that five parts of the story. I want you to get good at answering those five questions, because once you get good at answering those five questions, it's like grocery shopping. It takes practice too, my friend. Okay, once it's like going grocery shopping. Once we go grocery shopping and we come home and we put you know, take out the groceries, put them on the counter. Now we have options of what to cook. So, um, so, that, so that's one, get, get good at those. Uh, the other is, um, you can actually Google uh, some of the common questions that just generally ask, which is, you just said, tell me about, your, uh, about yourself. Where do you see yourself three years down the road? Why should we hire you? Those are like some common questions, and I'm sure uh, Angela and her team can give you some common questions and just learn how to answer those questions. The other thing too, it's okay if you are asked a question and you don't know the answer. 
And here's what you could say. Steve, is it Steve? Steven. Steven. Steven, you know what? That's a great question. I don't actually, I'm a little nervous right now. I don't even have, I don't have an answer. Can I get back to you? See, that honesty right there, very few people are willing to be forthright and honest. We're human beings. If I get Dean, because that recruiter, that employer said, oh, Oscar didn't know the answer. I treat it the same way that I treat that gentleman who, told, who blackballed me because I reached a, this is not the right person. Because we all are going to make mistakes. We're all not going to have answers. I bet you I could ask that recruiter, my friend, a question and they wouldn't have the answer to. Like, we're even. See, again, this comes back to where you feel confident about yourself because you don't need 10 offers. You just need one that matches you. No, so let me clarify. <clears throat> the career portfolio is is like it's sort of kind of like your, your imagine your virtual uh, backup that you have your arsenal, okay? That you're prepared. It's like I carry around with different adapters for my laptop, except for today. <laughs> but uh, normally I carry different adapters. Like I, I walk around prepared with my arsenal, okay? That's what that career portfolio is about. Is about. Um, I don't know who the employers that are going to be here again. Angela and her team can give you more specifics on who is going to be here. Um, but odd chance are on the spot, they're probably not going to ask you for your career portfolio. It's probably more of a follow up. One thing that I do recommend is find out who the employees are that are going to be here tomorrow. Secondly, is um, research the ones that you're interested in. And then thirdly, Ask Angela and her team if they are able to make an introduction to those specific employers. So say, for example, tomorrow, I don't know, I'm just making this up. There's 30 employers here. And out of those 30, there's only five that I'm really interested in. I would go to Angela, the team, and I would say, Angela, do you know anyone at these five companies? And would you be open to making an introduction for me either tomorrow or via email? I don't know the answer, but at least I asked, right? Maybe she'll say yes, or maybe she's like, no, you know what, we can do it. But at least I asked. Because now I'm going in there with a plan, focused target, instead of like walking around, talking to these other 25 knucklehead employers that, yeah. Okay? Great questions. What else? Yes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the question is, when you look for internships or jobs, what are some things that you can look for to determine whether or not uh, they're legitimate or, you know, a scam? So um, one thing is uh, always look at the website. If they don't have a website, to me, that's a red flag. Doesn't mean necessarily that I discount them, but it's a red flag. Number two, is there a contact information? on that uh, job description. Um, hey, you can block your number and call that number and see if it's legit, okay? Also, uh, if there is a contact person, look them up online, go to their website or go to LinkedIn or you know um, Google it and see if that person shows up somewhere uh, on the company page. Directory, sometimes companies have a, a directory, okay? Usually, the person's contact that's on that job description, not always, but usually, they're listed somewhere on the website. They're very prominent. Um, the other is, is reach out to someone in your network, again, career services or another professional, and ask them about that particular uh, em employer or opportunity, em yeah, employer. And the last one is you can go to some of these other websites, like for example, like uh, Indeed, where there's, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, oh my gosh, like uh, reviews of, uh, of companies and see what they say. Okay, sure. Other questions? Yes, Angela. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the question is, uh, the video resume, do I see that being used more and more? The, um, the answer is yes. Because, again, it, it is a way for our personality to come across on a video. Uh, and it's easier to, um, I, you know, to, to watch three or four videos, whatever, five or however many, and be like, oh, this person's personality, this is cool, right? Here's the other thing, too is employers know that very few people like to do videos and so they did self-select themselves so it's like <laughs> i have a smaller pool right honestly like if you don't follow directions right i think well so yeah i would do it okay great other questions awesome okay Video resume? Yes. So I want to know more information, like what kind of video um, would you be using for a resume? Like what kind of camera? Ah, uh, yes. So nowadays, you can even record uh, on Zoom. You, you can get the free version of Zoom, which it gives you 40 minutes. And you can, what I would do is, let's say, for example, I wanted to apply for Disney internship i will put a background of disney and then do my video resume with the disney background personalize it just like you would your resume and make it short less than a minute long you can edit it multiple times um, okay so do you use your phone or uh, oh yeah you can use uh the, the camera on your laptop yeah yeah you can you can also use your phone too yes Uh, it, well, feedback would come from either you can show to other your friends, career counselors, uh, before you send it to an employer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate it.